हेलो एवरीबॉडी वेलकम टू ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी आई एस अकेडमी डेलीज अपस्केल मेडिटेशनल मेंटोरशिप यूपीएससी कॉन्फिडेंस कोवनेंट प्रोग्राम दिस इज गोली वर्षा आई एम श्योर यू टेकिंग द टेस्ट सीरियसली एंड राइटिंग दैम कंसिस्टेंटली एवरी सिंगल डे ऑन दिस पॉजिटिव नोट वी शेल सी द टेस्ट एक्सप्लेनेशन फॉर सी सेट क्वेश्चन गिवन ऑन डे सिक्सटीन Let us look into the first question. In a certain competition, the ratio of the participants who chose Team A to Team B was seven is to three. If two more participants had chosen Team A, and at the same time three fewer participants had chosen Team B, the new ratio of Team A to Team B would have been eight is to three. What is the difference between the initial number of participants who chose Team A and the number of participants who chose Team B? Okay, now. Team A, Team B, right? What is the old ratio? It is seven is to three. Now, if they've given that in the new ratio, if two more participants have chosen Team A, which means, in absolute numbers, what are the number of participants? It is seven k and three k, or seven x and three x. All right. Two more participants had chosen Team A, and three fewer participants had chosen Team B. That means three k minus three. Okay. Now, what is the ratio? New ratio. This is the new one. No. Now, what is the ratio? It is eight is to three, which means seven k plus two by three k minus three is equal to eight by three. Okay. This three 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 will get cancelled. All right. And what will you get? Seven k plus two is equal to eight k minus eight. All right. So because this k minus one will be multiplied by eight. No. Yeah. Now what will you get? K is equal to ten. All right. Now what are they asking? What is the difference of initial number of participants who chose Team A and the number of participants who chose Team B? Now the difference between this one they are asking. All right. So this is seven parts. This is three parts. What is the difference? It is four parts. That is four K. Okay. Now four K means four into ten. That is Forty, so A is the answer. All right. Now, next question. In a class, the ratio of students who passed the final exam and the students who failed was seven is to two. Okay, so pass and fail. It is seven is to two. In absolute numbers, you can take it as seven x and two x. Okay. If two more students had taken the exam and passed, and the number of failed students was four less than before. The ratio of passed students to failed students would have been six is to one. What are they saying now? What are what is the total number of students? That is seven x plus two x. It is nine x. Okay. Now, two more students had taken the exam. If two more students had taken the exam, then the total new total would be new total would be nine x plus two. All right. And what is the new pass and fail number? P dash and F dash. It is four le uh, four students less than before, so this will become two x minus four. All right. Now in the second scenario, what is the total number of students who pass the exam? It is total minus number of students who fail. So it is nine x plus two minus of two x minus four. So how much will you get? You will get seven x plus six. All right. It is given that. Ratio of p dash to f dash is six is to one, which means seven x plus six by two x minus four is equal to six. Six is to one. Six is also fine. Writing six is also fine. Okay, so now what will you get? Seven x plus six is equal to twelve x minus twenty four. All right. Now what will you get? Five x is equal to thirty. Five x is equal to thirty. X is equal to six. Now, what are they asking you to find out? What is the difference between the number of students who originally passed the exam and the number of students who failed the exam? Okay, so X is six. What is X? It is the see seven X and two X we have taken no number of students who passed and number of students who failed. So that is X. X is equal to six. Now, what they are asking you to find out the difference between these two numbers. What is the difference between these two numbers? Seven into six minus two into six. Okay, instead of writing like that, you can directly write five seven x minus two x is how much? It is five x. So five into six is how much? Thirty. 
all right so a is the answer now when the price of a movie ticket is increased in the ratio 5 is to 6 then the number of weekly viewers in the theater decreases in the ratio 9 is to 8 okay see this is the initial price this is the initial price and initial viewers new price and new viewers okay so viewers and price all right so it is 5 is to 6 and it is 9 is to 8 okay if the weekly income before the increase in the ticket price was 90000 then find the weekly income after the increase in price of the ticket okay now if you take viewers uh, and price in this tableau form now what will you get total amount total amount will be in the ratio 5 nines are 45 is to 6 eights are 48 and after simplifying how much will we get it is 15 is to 16 so the income so this is the ratio of incomes all right so 15 is to 16 is the ratio now what are they asking find the weekly income after the increase in the ticket price they are asking you to find the absolute number okay now this one they have given us 90,000 all right that means 15 parts is equal to 90,000 in the ratio if you are dividing this cake into 31 parts 15 parts is eaten by this first scenario no so that's what I'm writing 15 parts is 90,000 then 16 parts will be how much all right so 15 parts is 90,000 means what one part is 6,000 all right now 16 parts is 16 into 6,000 that is 96,000 all right so d is the answer now a stall has three different sizes of packets of popcorn and chips okay so popcorn and chips all right they are in the sizes of large super and jumbo large super and jumbo the ratio of large super and jumbo packets of popcorn stock is 7 is to 17 is to 16 and the ratio of large super and jumbo packets of chips in the stock is 6 is to 15 is to 14 all right and they've given that um, this total number of chips packets and popcorn packets are same now what is the total number of chips packets if c is the constant 6c plus 15c plus 14c now what is 14c plus 6c it is 20c 20c plus 15c is how much 35c now according to the condition that is given 40 p is equal to 35 c now what is p is to c p is to c is 5 eights are 5 seven are so p is to c is how much 7 is to 8 all right so this jumbo the ratio of jumbo packets is how much 16 is to 14 and ratio of p is to c is how much 7 is to 8 so the ratio of total number of jumbo packets of popcorn is to chips will be 16 into 7 is to 14 into 8 all right so 8 ones are and uh, 8 twos are will go 7 one, 7 twos 2 and 2 so it will be 1 is to 1 so 1 is to 1 is the answer all right now next question given three positive whole numbers a b and c the ratio of a to b is 3 is to 4 and the ratio of b to c is 2 is to 1 what is the one possible value of sum of a b and c all right so now they have given that a is to b is 3 is to 4 b is to c is 2 is to 1 all right now what will be a is to b is to c here see whenever you are taking what is the common uh, number in between these two ratios it is b no but here b is some 4 the ratio or uh, if you take the ratio a is to b is 3 is to 4 so b is equivalent to 4 parts of something but here b is equivalent to 2 parts okay so this also you have to change it to 4 how will you change it by multiplying it with 2 only then so here it's 4 is to 2 2 is to 1 or 4 is to 2 or 8 is to 4 all are same okay the ratios all are same all right now only then only if this is same only then you can merge these two ratios okay so the ratio of a is to b is to c is how much 3 is to 4 is to 2 all right 
So, what is the sum of a plus b plus c if x is the common constant here? A 3x plus 4x plus 2x, okay, which means it is 9x, okay. So, the sum of a plus b plus c is a multiple of 9, all right. Now, which number is divisible by 9? It is 207, clearly, because the sum of the digits is divisible by 9. So, C is the answer, all right. So, here it is ratio proportion plus divisibility test rule, both combined together, we have given a sum, all right. Now, two types of tea, Gemini and Lipton are mixed and then sold at rupees 40, dollar 40 per kg. The profit is 10% of Gemini and Lipton are mixed in the ratio 3 is to 2 and 5% if, uh, if they are mixed in the ratio 2 is to 3. The cost price per kg of Gemini and Lipton are in the ratio, okay. Let small g and small l represent the cost price of Gemini T and Lipton T respectively. All right. Here, let small g and small l represent the two types of T's, Gemini and Lipton. Okay. So first ratio is three to two, no, which means it is three three parts of Gemini T and two parts of Lipton T. All right. Now you should also understand. Uh, and the other uh, ratio given is two g and 3L. Now, you should understand one thing here that profit and loss concept is also used here. Profit and loss. Now, how will you get profit if you are buying it for some price that is called cost price? If you are the seller, you are buying it, buying it from a wholesale market that is cost price and you are selling it to a person. Okay. Then, if the selling price is greater than cost price, then you will get profit. All right. So, this fellow is getting profit. How much? How much is he getting? He is getting 10% of profit. All right. 10% profit means it is if initially, if initially CP is the cost price, CP is the cost price and uh, selling price would be 10% more than CP. Every number is 100% of itself. CP means 100% of CP. Now, this SP selling price is 110% of CP, which means if you didn't understand, just look at this step. SP is equal to CP plus 10% of CP. Okay. So, CP is 100% of CP. Every number is 100% of itself. So, how much it will become? It will become 110% of CP. That's what I've written here. All right. So, this is the selling price if it is in the ratio 3 is to 2. All right. So, what is the selling price that is given? It is 40 per kg. This is equal to 110% of 3g plus 12. All right. And in the next scenario also, the selling price is same. 40 is equal to now, here the profit is only 5%, which means it is 105% of 2G plus 3L. All right. Now, if you divide these two, no, how much will you get? 1 by 2 if you do, not 1 by 2, this was first equation by second equation. So, 110% of 3G plus 2L by 105% of 2G plus 3L plus 3 is equal to 40 by 40. All right, so this will get cancelled. Now, here also percentage percentage will get cancelled and it is 5 into 22, 5 into 21. All right, so 22 into 3G plus 2L is equal to 21 into 2G plus 3L. All right, so how much will it become? It will become 66G minus all the G's I am grouping it on the left hand side, okay, minus 42G is equal to 63L minus, all the L's I am grouping it to right hand side, minus 44L, all right. Now, 24G is equal to 19L. So, G is to L is how much? It is 19 is to 24. That is what they are asking, no? The cost prices per kg of Gemini and Lipton T are in the ratio 19 is to 24. Two identical jars of same shape are respectively 
two fifth and three seventh full of juice. They are then filled up with soda and the contents are poured into a bowl. What is the ratio of juice and soda in the bowl? Okay, now there are two jars. Okay, same shape. Okay, now now the total juice in first jar, jar one and jar two. Okay, so what is the juice quantity here? It is two by fifth of the whole thing. All right. Now, what is the juice quantity of this one? It is three by seventh of the whole thing. Now, what is the quantity of soda? If two fifth of the jar is filled with juice, then the remaining will be filled with soda, right? So it is one minus two fifth. All right. So it is how much? It is three fifth of the jar is filled with soda. Now, why did I take one here? Because in when you're taking fractions, no, the maximum. Uh, Full quantity, if if you're taking in fraction, it will be one. All right. So because see, hundred percent is what one, no. So that's why here, hundred percent of the jar, if you're writing it in fraction terms, then it is one. All right. So three fifth of the jar is filled with soda. Now, what is the quantity of soda in the second jar? It is one minus the juice quantity. That is three by seven. One minus three by seven is how much? It is four by seven. All right. Now these two jars, the contents of these two jars are mixed together. Okay, and they are asking you to find out the ratio of total juice is to total soda. Okay, so it will be the summation of this one. How much is the LCM? Thirty-five. Two by five plus three by seven is how much? L denominator is thirty-five. So five uh, into seven. Seven twos is fourteen plus five threes is fifteen. It is twenty-nine. By thirty-five. All right. Now, what is the total content of soda? It is three by five plus four by seven. Now, what is three by five plus four by seven? Here also, the LCM is thirty-five. All right. Now, seven threes are twenty-one. Twenty-one plus five fours are twenty. So it is forty-one by thirty-five. Forty-one by thirty-five. Now they are asking the ratios, right? So twenty-nine is to thirty-five. Is to forty one is to thirty five. This thirty five thirty five will get get cancelled. It is twenty nine is to forty one. Juice to soda. So it is twenty nine is to forty one. If they ask you soda is to juice, then it will be forty one is to twenty nine. So don't get confused. All right. So the answer here is twenty nine is to forty one. After solving everything, if you mark the wrong answer, it will be terrible. You will feel terrible. All right. Now. The ratio of a two-digit natural number to a number formed by reversing its digits is four is to seven. The number of such pairs is. See, initially, if the number is x y, okay, if y is the units digit and x is the tens digit of a two-digit number, this can be written as we have seen in the number system, no, units digit is one into y plus ten into x. Okay, this is the number. For example, if you take twenty-five, how will you write? It is five plus ten into two. No, the same thing I've written here. So twenty plus five is twenty-five. So the same thing I've written here. Now the digits are reversed, which means the new number will become how much? It will become ten y plus x. Y fellow will come to tens digit. X is going to units digit. All right. Now the ratio of old number to new number is how much? Four is to seven. All right. Now, how much will it become? It will become seventy x plus seven y is equal to forty y plus four x. All right. So, if you get all these x into the left hand side, you will get sixty six x is equal to thirty three y. All right. So, x is to y is one is to two, which means if x is one, y will be the uh, double of that number. That is two. Okay, so we have to see how many pairs satisfy this equation. You, it has to be only two-digit number. All right. So, x and y. If x is one, y is two. That means the number is twelve, and the reverse of that will become twenty-one. All right. Now, if x is two, the y then y number is four. All right. The reverse of it is forty-two. So these are pairs, no? Now, if x is three, I'm just substituting the values, okay, for x and y. 
all right so 36 it will become 63 if x is 4 it is 48 and 84 all right now when x is 5 y will become 10 no so there is no scope of forming a two digit number okay y itself is becoming a two digit number okay so this is gone how many numbers are satisfying how many pairs of numbers are satisfying the given uh, conditions 1 2 3 4 only 4 pairs are satisfying the given condition so b is the answer all right in a river the ratio of the speed of current and the speed of boat in still water is 4 is to 9 similarly the ratio of speed of the current to the speed of another boat in still water is 5 is to 11 what is the ratio of speed of the first boat to that of the second boat in still water? That means there are two boats. Okay, and let the speed of the current be C, speed of first boat be B1, speed of second boat be B2. Okay, now what did they give? C is to B1 is 4 by 9 and C is to B2 is 5 by 11. Okay, now what are they asking? They are asking you to find out the ratio of speed of the first boat to that of the second boat in still water, which means they are asking you b1 is to b2 is how much okay so here here if you what if c by b1 is 4 is to 9 what is the value of b by b1 by c it is 9 by 4 all right it is 9 by 4 now you multiply this and this what will you get b1 by c into c by b2 is equal to 9 by 4 into 5 by 11. C and C will get cancelled. Now, B1 is to B2 is how much? You will get 45 by 9 to 5 is 45. 4 into 11 is 44. So, 45 is to 44. All right. 45 is to 44 is the answer. B is the answer. Okay. Now, you have to be very careful uh, about this one. The ratio of speed of the first boat to that of the second boat. So, B1 is to B2. You have to find out if they ask you the other way speed of the second boat is to first boat sometimes they will ask like that also and uh, you will mess up in marking the answer don't do that all right now the monthly incomes of x and y are in the ratio 4 is to 3 and the monthly expenses are in the ratio 3 is to 2 however each saves rupees 6000 per month what is their total monthly income okay there is x there is y and uh, Incomes are in the ratio 4 is to 3 and the monthly expenses are in the ratio 3 is to 2. Okay, now what is saving? Saving is the income one gets minus the expenses. Alright, now savings, if you take income minus expense, what is the difference of number of parts? Number of parts, it is one part. Okay. Now, when one part is equal to 6,000 per month, 6,000 per month, here also it is one part only, no? So, directly you can take the difference. So, one part and one part, 6,000 and both fellows are saving 6,000 rupees, all right? When one part is 6,000 rupees, then how much will four parts be, four parts be and how much will three parts be, all right? Instead of finding them individually, because they are asking the total monthly income, you can directly write 4 parts plus 3 parts, that is 7 parts is the total monthly income. Now, 7, pa 7 parts means 7 into 6000, alright, 7, 6 are 42, so 42,000 is the answer, alright. This is it for today, practice these methods consistently, revise them and you will be very confident about CSAT paper. Always remember, 10 questions a day keeps your CSAT fear at bay. All the best.